You have an entire bowl of food over there. No, he's like, it's cold outside. I just want to be near you guys as... And have my entire butt in that. Yeah. I'm just going to stand here. Wow. It is cold outside. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things, like recipe videos, and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time I say, Houston, we have a problem, you'll be alerted to it. Why? Well, last night we tried cheese. Yeah, we and, ate a bunch of it. And I went to bed, mm -hmm. and I felt a little in my stomach like, mm, this sounds not quite right. And then I woke up this morning, and my eyeballs and all through here feel super, super puffy. Oh. I'm not happy. I'm not happy right now. I'm going to say we need to do this experiment again. Number one, we it's, did two cheeses. We did two cheeses. It's daylight savings time. It's daylight time. savings time. And or we had, whatever you call this And time. we you had fall back. a drastic temperature change. Yeah. Alexa, what's the temperature outside? Right now, it's 57 degrees Fahrenheit. It is 57 Today, degrees. 74 degrees. By the way, you can also ask, what is the weather tomorrow? I'm, I'm good. I'm good? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. 57 degrees. 57 degrees. So that's sweater weather. That, that's, clearly. That's parka weather here in Florida. People, we're going to go to church today. I know. People are going to have earmuffs I love and gloves. It. I'm so excited because the kids dress up so stinking cute. They'll have like little hats and peacoats. My favorite. But not my favorite is feeling the uncertain puffiness. about what is giving me what puffiness. What is it? Because... What's weird is, what is it in the cheese that's causing? Because I don't really feel that. I'm tired, but that's because I went to bed at 2 a.m. and I've been staring at a computer screen for a long time, so my eyes were burning. But I was just, I, I finished all of our passwords. Oh Good my job. gosh. To Mine go too. Through, I haven't gotten to yours yet. But you're going to have a lot of things that you're going to try to log on to that we have a joint account on, and you're not going to be I'm able not to. Be because able I to. haven't put the password manager on your. Like computers and your phone yet. I look forward to a fun week. So, um, I, I'm, I'm tired and I, whether it's fall back or spring ahead, I do not do well with the time change. And that is why I want to make a movement to get rid of the time change in honor of Joe. There's a lot of people who want to get rid of the time change and... There's no done it reason yet. for the time change. It was started for farmers, and farmers don't need it anymore because they have lights and everything else. Right. We have electricity. So anyway, it's what's interesting is is what is it in the cheese that is causing it? Because you were fine with keto chow, which is also dairy based. So what I would like to do is go back. And let's do this experiment again with cheese. So is now it the fact that that cheese curds is a little bit like, even though it, it had it a the, best by date till December, is it the hot sauce within there? Was it the there? buffalo right. seasoning in it? So we're gonna go back. I'd like to start with feta. Yeah. Again, so we'll go back to the drawing board and see if we can add just feta and see what happens then. Sounds really good. So. Uh, Today is just gonna be a cleanse day, right? I yeah. mean, we're having we're having this, but we already know that this was was fine with us. But we're we're gonna have a keto chow and then do a bunch of beef, which I will be excited for a bunch of beef. Me too. And then um, 
we have our Patreon live stream tonight. Yay! Our, 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 we have to call it something different because we also have our channel members who are invited in as well. So it's like our supporter live stream. Yeah, but that sounds like a clear. I don't know. Well, we'll come up with something. Well, yeah. Like the road back, day six. It is sweater weather. I've got one of my cardigan sweaters on. I haven't worn this thing in a while. It fits perfect, but it's usually too hot to wear this sweater. So I'm gonna enjoy this temperature. So I just stopped at BJ's to uh, get a roast for tonight. We're gonna put it on the Kamado Joe rotisserie because it only takes like an hour to cook and we have the you know, supporter live stream tonight. And uh, I just found out they have their version of scan and go. So that's really cool. So now you can walk throughout the store, find what you want, scan it, pay for it on your phone and walk out and not have to wait in line. And that's always been one of my issues with BJ's is their lines are really long. The only thing is you can't spend more than $750 and you can't have more than 20 items. BJ's has pork belly now, $4.99 a pound. That's pretty cool. These are the smaller ones and that's really good because maybe you don't have a really big smoker. One thing when you're picking pork belly, try to find one that has a lot of meat because obviously there's a lot of fat on pork belly, but if you wanna make bacon, I always try to find ones that have a thicker amount of meat like this one right here. This is the next thing I wanna try on the Kamado Joe. They have an Australian lamb boneless leg, $7 a pound, but I gotta learn how to season it properly and cook it in the rotisserie, but I bet you that would be really, really delicious. So here's what I ended up getting. I got two of these beef bottom rounds. Uh, this one weighs about three pounds. This one weighs uh, three and a half pounds and they're $4.89 a pound. We actually really like these on the rotisserie and they cook within an hour. So we're gonna get some of this organic vanilla unsweetened almond milk to make Maria Emmerich's egg pudding with. Uh, I like this one because it's got really clean ingredients, filtered water, organic almonds, less than 2% of vanilla flavor, calcium carbonate, sea salt, and galan gum. A lot of these uh, almond milks have really bad ingredients, and this is two grams of carbs per serving. So I'm home, and now I need to get everything ready for the Patreon slash YouTube supporter live stream tonight, and then after that, I'm gonna work on some videos. I also have to finish with all the password stuff. If you are interested, a bunch of people have asked, like, what am I doing for password? I really researched all of the different password managers out there, like 1Password and Keeper and all the different ones. And after speaking with some people, and then I also talked to Chris Bear, I ended up going with 1Password because some of the other companies have had security breaches or they don't have really good customer service. The problem is now I have 1,400 passwords or something like that. So I did probably about 90% of them last night, but I still got a few more that, like I have joint with Rachel, like YouTube and stuff like that. So I'm gonna finish setting that up and then I'm gonna put everything on her computer and then when she gets home tonight on her phone, this way we are a lot more secure. I am going to drink my keto chow while I'm sitting here working. One of the things I'm starting to do is use a straw. I started this before the beef, butter, bacon and egg because I will suck these things down, but if I have a straw, it does kind of slow me down a little bit. It was quite the fashion show this morning, wasn't it? It was. The kids were really cute, and then all the adults are dressed up in like winter wear. Yes, everybody wore gray too, wasn't that it's wild? It's kind of weird. It's like the memo went out, wear a gray sweater today. Yeah, that was so neat, but um, it was cool that everybody, as we anticipated, wore all of their little snuggly stuff. They had hats, and I mean, it was just so much fun, but we have to get it in while the getting's good because tomorrow it could be 90 degrees. Yeah, it's like South Florida weather. One day, we're, we get like six of these cold days a year. Yeah. I was actually thinking as I was setting up for the Patreon live stream tonight, I hope it's cold on Thursday. Really? Yeah, because uh, air conditioner, live stream, 11 straight hours. I did not even <laughs> think about that. We can't run the air that. conditioner during the live stream. Oh I was trying to gracious. fix the audio and make sure we don't have any audio issues. And Oof. it's pretty...
pretty bad when that air conditioner kicks on in there. The good news today was my swelling went down around my eyes and face. I feel much better now yeah. than I did. I was a little bit nervous about drinking my keto chow and it was like, is that going to exacerbate anything? But right. it didn't. I feel really yeah, good. Yeah, I'm curious if just something happened because like we're going to have to do the test again. Yeah, could be daylight savings time. It, it could be so many different things. Ta it could be in temperature. lots of cayenne pepper or whatever they use for that buffalo yeah. cheese so but we've narrowed it down so now we'll try we'll have you try like just the buffalo cheese or just the feta cheese exactly because again you didn't have any reaction to the dairy that's in keto chow because it is made with a milk protein isolate so i think what the issue is is we got to keep them separated yeah uh, 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 but it also uh, only lasts uh, a little while and again yeah. that's the whole point is is trying to narrow things down not necessarily say i'm never going to have this again but to know that like hey when I have this, I can expect a little bit of inflammation. Well, because today was fine and it went away pretty fast. But if I find out that I have inflammation from a certain item, am I going to eat it the night before we do an 11 hour right. live stream? No. Is it going to be something that I eat the evening before we go to um, Michelle and John's first Thanksgiving and I want to be totally like taking in all of the beauty and awesomeness. No, right. like that. I will just eat something else on that day. Well, I'm hoping that you don't have any other reactions, but Me speaking too. of hope. Yeah. I did like your devotion this morning in church to all the church volunteers. I actually Aww. recorded a piece of it. Oh no, you didn't. But in order for us to have that hope that is in the Lord, we need to be a prisoner of hope. And I love that analogy because there are some things a prisoner is just not allowed to take inside. They don't get to decide, I like this outfit, I would like to have this particular food, right? All of those things are decided for them if they're a prisoner, they can't bring in. And so when you're a prisoner of hope, what are some of the things that a prisoner of hope, as far as God would be concerned, would not bring into the holiday season. Rivalry, jealousy, envy. You're not gonna be bringing in snarkiness. I'm not gonna be bringing in a record of wrongs. I'm not gonna go into my Thanksgiving dinner and be like, oh, please don't sit me next to Uncle Crazy. Again, <laughs> again, right? Or if I walk in and I'm Uncle Crazy, you know, like, well, I gotta keep, you know, arguing everything. Like, this is my, this is where I do it. I like, I totally blast out on my family. You know, so as a prisoner of hope, we can decide not to bring in certain things that the world brings into the holiday season. Well, wow. Thanks for paying attention. Well, the thing is, is that, I mean, we've talked about hope before and what you were talking about there, though we, you were speaking like in our relationship with God and in church and working in children's ministry, you can apply that same thing to your keto, carnivore, perfect human diet lifestyle. I think you really can because it's such a unique phrase, a prisoner of hope. And uh, immediately when you're thinking, well, you're a prisoner of something, that's a negative, mm -hmm. right? And, and I think about that in terms of what we eat. We're sort of locked in. Right. We're locked in to a certain way of eating. We're locked in with these are the foods that we eat. And, you know, sometimes you can kind of push back on that. Right. Like, I'm upset. I don't want to be a prisoner to anything. I don't want to be locked up with only these foods. This is all that I could eat. But you know, when you are locked in with keto, you're also locked in with health. Right. You're also locked in with feeling good. And it's not a punishment. There's some things that I can say, hey, guess what? I don't, I don't want to have a visitation from that. Like that, that is something that a prisoner can do, right? Like right. if someone comes to visit the prisoner, they can say, yeah, I'm not, I'm not talking to them. I'm not, I'm not showing up on right. the other side of that wall. And I think it's been a relief for me at least that there's some things that just cause everybody else is, is eating it and feeling inflamed and you know, Hey, but this is part of the holidays. We're supposed to feel miserable as soon right. as we're done with Thanksgiving. We're supposed to fall asleep and be in a food coma. And I can be like, yeah, I don't eat that way. And so I enjoy my entire Thanksgiving and the days that follow it, you yeah. know? You know what I'm gonna enjoy? Steak. We got lunch. So I went to BJ's, I bought two bottom round roasts. 
There's actually another one back there that's getting ready to go on. Nice. This way we have some beef already made. Got to have some backup. And this one came out perfect. It was, it's a perfect medium rare. I see. Um, I'm really impressed with this one. I really monitored the temperature well. Mm. And uh, again, this one I put the lemon pepper from Redmond on top of it. A little bit different flavor. And then a couple of slices of the Maria Amber bread with a little bit of butter on top. And I just realized we didn't close that cabinet door. So we have enjoy that. Enjoy the look of inside of our old cabinets. <laughs> Welcome to day seven of the road back and day two of this vlog. So last night we had our live stream for all of our patrons and our YouTube channel members. It was awesome. And then we just decided to relax. It was like such a long day. So I was like, you know what? We're going to make this a two day vlog. Now, I know we did say in the morning yesterday that we were going to make the Maria Emmerich egg pudding, but we decided that we wanted to extend another day of just like beef, butter, bacon, and eggs because you had woken up with a little bit of puffiness. We weren't sure what it was. Was it yeah. the cheese or was it something else? So we wanted so an variables. extra day to kind of like let things even out. So we're gonna make the egg pudding today and then we can eat it tomorrow because that would give you Wednesday to recover if there is an issue because we don't wanna do anything weird on Wednesday with an no. 11 hour live stream on Thursday. Normally I am all about Wacky Wednesday, but we're gonna keep it to wearing funny socks and, yeah. and leave it there because I, I don't want to, to push it, especially when we've got 11 hours on um, Thursday. Today. Yeah, so Wednesday, Wednesday is going to be a very, very basic day. But I did yesterday when we went to BJ's, I bought, or I went to BJ's, I bought two of those roasts. And as soon as we finished the one, I put the second one on. And I'm going to actually run that one through the meat slicer. Oh, I'm so glad. And we can just kind of warm it up a little bit or just eat it as maybe like a cold kind of lunch meat today. I'm excited about that. And it's interesting that you brought up beef because Dr. Barry actually linked a very interesting article today on his MeWe I was looking at um, from the Wall Street Journal about what is people's strategy going to be moving forward as ribeye prices have risen over 40% in the last year. Like, what is going to be our grocery shopping strategy as we move forward? I know what my strategy is being. My strategy is going to be, I am going to drive to New York in RV, and I'm going to go sit on my mom's deck, and I'm just gonna wait for the deer that my mother and sister sent me a picture of that is visiting them every morning. And there you go. You're gonna wait until your groceries come to you. I'm gonna let my groceries come to me. This is different than Instacart. This is Insta Deer. That's what you're hoping for? Well, honestly, I mean, it is something I miss. I mean, my dad and I used to go hunting and like being here when I moved to Florida, you know, I don't really have a place to go. There's a lot of public lands and I'd love to meet somebody who's got a place for us to go hunting. Yeah. I mean, I look at like Robert, who uh, was gonna join us for Thursday, Keto Savage. Yeah. He was gonna join us for Thursday, but he is gonna be off-grid hunting in Colorado. How fun is that? I'm like super jealous of him. You're becoming the new charity. Good morning. And I think that that is something that like we're going to have to start looking into is First of all, supporting local farmer because it's gonna be cheaper to just go to your local farmer and buy a cow like we are. Is it a big investment up front? Yeah, but there's lots of shares out there where you can buy a half share or a quarter share. But I think that moving forward, we're, you're gonna see a lot more people starting to be like Dr. Barry, raising your own like meat and your geese and eventually a cow and get back into hunting. Well, one of the things the article said, which I think just naturally happened to us during the BBBE challenge was people are moving to bone in meats because you can get it for cheaper. And that's right. definitely what happened to us. We started incorporating roasts and other things, you know, into our cooking. And even with chicken and all kinds of other stuff, as meat prices go up, people are looking for bone in options. But I'm excited but that- But don't buy a cowboy steak. Right. Biggest rip off in the meat yeah. market. Yeah, but it's interesting because I think that as we return to things like roast and other bone in options, we're gonna get some beautiful recipes because people are gonna rediscover different cuts of meat. Well, even for me, like, you know, obviously a roast isn't bone in, but it's something that you don't think of when it comes to treating. Yeah. You know, we were always looking at like, oh, t today's a special day, we're gonna have a New York strip or a sirloin, or we're gonna have picanha, or we're gonna have, you know, a nice ribeye. 
And though it's not as fatty, like I honestly, for me, one of my favorite things that we're eating now are these roast beefs that we're cooking in the rotisserie yeah. because they're delicious with that slow, you know, cook on the spit and you get that crispy little edge all the way around and it's got a lot of flavor and then you can add some butter or some more tallow or something on top of it. It's really bringing me back to my childhood because we didn't eat steaks when I was a kid. Right. But we, my dad did have a Nescoware. I don't know if you know what that is. I do not. We had a Nescoware for that. We cooked our turkey and it's like a big cooker. Okay. And then we also had this old fashioned countertop rotisserie. You would put this thing on and it had like a heating element like you would see in an oven down below mm -hmm. and a spit. And that was what he made on there. He would buy roast beefs or, you know, different like eye rounds right. and things like that. Of course, back then when I was a kid, it was, it's a roast beef, right? No matter what, if it was, if it was on a spit, it was roast yeah. beef. And that was the one kind of beef we had. And I love that. That's where I got the fight over the end. You only have the two little end pieces. So I'm, it's kind of brought us back to the roots and... For me, that meat is just super flavorful and I'm enjoying it. It's really great and it actually helps out with meal prepping so much more because you're thinking like, you know, make a steak, have a meal, make a roast, have several meals. Right. I mean, even for us, we get at least two meals out of it and that's the only thing we're eating. And then also, by the way, when you compare it to as much as I love my brisket, it's a quick cook. I mean, it I is. bought that thing yesterday at 1230 in the afternoon and we were sitting down to eat by 3.30. And that was because we were, I, everything had to be timed for right. you. I bought it, brought it home, sat it on the counter. You said, I'm going to leave here around 2.30. I'm like, okay, I get the fire started at 2 o'clock. 2.30, it was on. 3.30, we were eating. We were ready to a eat. A delicious piece of slow-cooked meat with an amazing barbecue flavor. So maybe it wasn't the path we would have chosen but I'm glad that we discovered this on this path because especially going into the holiday season, I want stuff that cooks fast and is hearty, right? Yeah. Because it's got to fuel our day. Speaking of fast, um, we have the Keto on the Couch episode. Uh, bring your tissues for this one if you haven't seen it yet. Oh no. Uh, it's, it's in about 15 minutes and I need to take a shower. You're anticipating I'm gonna cry? Oh my goodness, y'all. My heart is beating like a thousand beats per minute still. I have got to share what just happened because I have to believe this will preach to somebody. So I went and got my nails done. And as you can see, there are no tips. This is my nails. I eventually wanted to do next gen nails on my own nails just because I'm not biting my nails anymore and I can do hard things. So I thought I want to fortify my regular nails and grow them out, but I've been getting tips all along. And I normally go to this really nice nail salon that Joe gets me gift certificates for, but I thought, oh, I'm gonna be smart. I need to get gas. I went over by the cheap gas station. Well, not cheap, it's Cumberland Farms and I have an app for it and I just love the ease of using the app. But I was over by a cheaper nail salon and I thought, well, I'm gonna save me some money. Turns out I did save $15 going to the cheaper nail salon versus going to my usual nail salon. However, in order to take off my old tips, they usually use um, like this little machine that kind of like scrapes down or files down your old fake nail so that you have a fresh nail bed for, for new nails. Well, this place does not do that. They don't soak your nails and nail polish remover. They don't use any kind of tools. They just, the guy that did my nails just took another fake fingernail and shoved it up between my already compromised nail bed and um, what was holding down uh, my tip and popped them all off. Well, let me tell you, it felt like he was just shoving a wooden splinter up each one of my nails. And I thought, uh-oh, when he did my first nail, by the time he's on nail number three, I'm like, oh Lord, this is how he's gonna do all of my nails. And he is creating like really tender wounds under each nail bed. I, I, I couldn't believe this was happening. And I am squirming and like hitting the roof and he is not stopping. I mean, this is how he's going to do it. So I thought, oh dear Lord. And I don't like to complain 
even though I was in agonizing pain, but I thought I cannot have this gentleman put tips on. It is going to hurt too bad because he's going to hit all those tender spots that he just created. So I asked him, please just add the next gen to my regular nails and I won't worry about tips this time. So here we go. I saved 15 whole dollars, but each one of my fingernails feel like they have been through a battle. And I thought this really reminds me of getting better keto snacks versus getting some cheap stuff in the store. So if I go through Chalk Zero or, you know, I buy Lilies, it's going to cost me more money to buy that product versus some of the other Russell Stover's, the Reese's, you know, some other kind of sweetener or... I mean, there's all kinds of ways that we can do keto cheap. If we will just look the other way and not scrutinize ingredients, you may be able to get a cheaper product, but I am living proof that sometimes going the cheap way is not always going the smart way. I wish that I would pay that other $15 and not been in such excruciating pain for the last 45 minutes. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see. Ooh, those are pretty. Thank you. Why are they so short? What happened to the tips that you had on there? Because I saved money. <laughs> I actually um, already videotaped something. You just haven't seen it yet. But uh -huh. yeah, this was a very painful lesson in you get what you pay for. You always get what you pay for. Same thing when it comes to our, and Charity is here. When it comes to your keto lifestyle, right? You know, a lot of people will message us and say things like, you know, I, I just can't spend a couple of extra dollars on a, a healthier snack option yep. like a keto bar or a good loving bar. This or, is exactly what you know, I said. Yeah, I don't want to have some of the extra meats or things like that. And you get what you pay for. We're, we're going to pay for it one place or another, right? If we don't want to put the money into better quality food, we end up putting it into doctors medicine. and medicine yeah. and health issues and stuff like that. Boy, so I learned my lesson today. I would love to see you be okay with treating yourself. What yeah, did you this, save? Like five dollars? Well, I saved fifteen. Okay, it's still not worth it. Which, but it was it was not worth it. It was yeah. not worth it. Rachel is precious, and you, Rachel can aw, spend a few extra dollars thanks, on herself. Honey. You know what is perfect and and worth it was I got these guys. So these are treat sacks that I got at Dollar Tree. I got one for you, one for me. I want this one. You want that one? And so every day I got enough, excuse me, to um, fill it up for all 24 days. Okay. So I fill one up each day for you. Mm -hmm. You fill one up each day with for me. Has to be under $5 per day. That's hard. Well, you can find a lot of stuff for under $5. You're talking about me. <laughs> You now you. I have to make up for that. Rachel wants to be treat, cheap with herself. You so. could go to the Dollar Tree and fill up these things with something fun. I mean, I'm gonna have to go back to get creative. You know, buying gift cards for you to force you to do your nails because that's the only way you'll actually spend. The oh money no no to no, do honey! Your nails. I learned this time. <laughs> so I just thought that would be fun because I didn't want an advent like a cheese calendar this time because right. I was just yeah. really unimpressed. Yeah. With the taste and flavor. And even though there's some really cute chocolate ones, I'm sure Chalk Zero has one that's coming out. Right. If I eat a piece of chocolate every single day in December, come January, guess what I want to do every single day continuing forward? Right. Eat a piece of chocolate. So I thought that this would be a fun way where we could have an advent calendar type thing, get gifts for one another, um, stay within a budget, and not derail ourselves. So Anthony and I went and cut a couple of houses. And then, of course, this morning... Uh, one of the belts broke on the mower the boys were cutting the house with. Mm -hmm. So we had to go get the new belt and fix the mower. So now Caleb can actually cut the grass during our next live stream. We will set it into his calendar. Uh, but yeah, we got that done. I came home. I set up everything for 11 on 11. Yay! So again, if you don't know, we're going to do an 11 hour live stream to raise awareness and money for our veterans. And we've chosen to support the cause, the Wounded Warriors Project. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've set up a campaign. There is a link down below. That link will take you to the campaign where you could donate money. Now, I did set a goal for $1,000, yeah. which I feel like is kind of low, but I have confidence in our Two Crazy Ketos family that we're going to 
far surpass a thousand dollars. I'd love to get to five thousand dollars. Well, I, my thought is, no matter what, we're observing this day in a special way that we've never done before. That's right. Maybe I mean, maybe we'll make this a regular thing. I love it. So you can go ahead and use that link down below to donate to Wounded Warriors through the Two Crazy Ketos Eleven on Eleven campaign. And also, I didn't even realize this because I had just chosen, we were, we were really researching where do we want to raise funds for? And there's yeah. several good charities. But when I was, I reached out to them and it turns out that this week they actually have something called Stream Week where a lot of YouTubers really? and Twitch streamers are all streaming, raising money and awareness for veterans. I, I think because love it's Veterans that. Week. And it's actually called Stream Week. So we're able to join in with that. Wow. And I'm really excited about that. So Me we have some too. lunch here. We have some of the leftover ground beef and ground pork the other day. And then Rachel looks like she made some pretty good eggs. You're getting pretty good on that I black did. stone. Well, I'll tell you what it is. I really enjoy fluffing it up first mm. in the Vitamix. I like to mix them up and they make it nice and fluffy. And we each have three eggs. We have two slices of bacon that is chopped up. My perfect purse bacon. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, the leftover the ground, beef. ground beef. The key to the eggs is low heat. Everybody wants to put their eggs onto a hot, high heat pan. Yeah. And that's where you get the burning on the bottom and the browning on the bottom. Low heat. It, does it take longer? Yes. Yes. But, it's but you get it. a much better egg, whether you're doing fried eggs or scrambled eggs or They're anything fluffy. like that. So we're going to eat. And then I have to go work on vlogs, continue setting stuff up, try to start arranging a schedule because we are going to have like giveaways. Um, Anthony is going to be joining us. I think Caleb, depending on his schedule, yeah. we're going to try to get him to join us. We've got a couple of guests. We're trying to get some more guests, but it's hard to get everybody to fit into a schedule, especially with the times that we're streaming and everything. But I'm just, I'm excited for 11 on 11. Me too. I really am. So we're going to finish eating and we'll check with you guys later. That dinner was really delicious and really filling that I don't know if I want any roast tonight what i don't you? think i do either i want to just... split a keto chow ice cream in the creamy like one between the two of us i'm totally down with it it was it's really nice just knowing i'm hungry i'm hungry right now if i'm not hungry later it's fine i don't need to end the night with the biggest meal of the day I can have a big breakfast if I want. And in this case, we had a big lunch, so. Well, the lunch, I didn't even realize until after we ate, was at 5.30 at night. Yo, yeah. I mean, it was. <laughs> the day flew by and I didn't realize what time it was. It I really wasn't did. hungry all day. By the time I got home, I don't know if I was hungry because I was <laughs> I had been scared by my nail experience or if I was legitimately hungry, but I, I felt pretty hungry. So yeah, now I feel satisfied. So roulette. Keto chow ice cream, we'll split one. Let's do it. Okay, I have no idea. You want to take a guess? There's four chocolate colored ones. <laughs> I don't know what. It could be mocha. It could be chocolate peanut butter and banana mixed. It's very It dark. is what it is, right? Okay, so what is your guess? I don't know. I have no idea. I literally reached my hand and grabbed one out of the freezer. I'm going to guess it's mocha. Here you go. Wow. Move on my accoutrement. Like, well, what are you, you're previewing the video, right? So we can I upload am. it, so we can premiere it. Making sure that we didn't say anything crazy. So this is two respins. Okay. It is, I actually like it with two respins. It's like almost like a, a hard ice cream, like if you go to an ice cream store. Now, I said it was mocha. Did you have a. I didn't thought? guess. Okay. So it's, it's only either it. mocha or chocolate peanut butter. It's mocha. It's mocha. It's mocha. Good, good call, Rachel. Good job. How did I identify that? It's really good. So the coffee flavor, to me, at least as an ice cream, doesn't really come through. We don't do mocha very often. We don't. Because usually I think we had one bag of mocha and to, to never bought To be honest, one. if I'm in a mocha mood, I want caramel macchiato. Is mm -hmm. what I actually want. So that's fine. But I mean, it's and before delicious. That, we used to just take chocolate keto chow. Mm-hmm. And add coffee as right. the water, and you had mocha, right? Mm -hmm. It was the same thing. So the mocha keto chow actually does have coffee in it. 
Whereas the caramel macchiato and the Irish cream, we didn't add when we developed those two flavors, yeah. the keto chow. We didn't add coffee because some people don't drink coffee. My mom is one of those people that can't have coffee. Right. I will At least late in the day. Act, exactly, late in the day. So she'll come over and I'll be like, hey, you want a cup of coffee? And she'll be like, wait a second, what time is it? Right. Because you know if it's after a certain time, I'm going to be up all night. It's really good. It's really good. Again, with butter. With the creamy, I really don't see a need to ever use heavy whipping cream. I don't either. We'll have I to really try it don't. once because we have not tried it in the creamy with yes. heavy whipping cream. But, but I mean, it's super tasty, very rich. I mean, I think to myself, it couldn't get any richer. And butter brings out the flavor in keto chow. Now we're not mm -hmm. adding, I really, I really, really wanted to add a mix in, but I know we're going to do the egg pudding tomorrow, which yeah. I have the eggs cooking right now. Um, so I didn't do a mix in, but like, I want to add like, I was thought of another mix in, chop what? up some keto brick. Especially the, the the salted caramel. Yeah, we need to take the salted yes. caramel when we. What, well, guess which one it is, and then you're gonna do, you're gonna do that like I would do two respins and then a mix in, and when we once we blend it up and we can taste which one it is. Yes. Let's mix in a little bit of the the keto brick, the salted caramel, the maple pecan one. Right. That would be so good in there. Okay. Now I want that. Well, not to, not today. <laughs> not Finish today. previewing this so that Finish we can do this. a premiere. Okay. This just in. Activities for Christmas. I am excited about this series. I am too. It's going to be so much fun. Getting all the games and elfin activities ready for kids ministry. So, yeah, right now we're in the middle of a construction series, which is perfect because... We're in a construction. We're under construction at the main building, and then we have another campus opening up, which is also under construction. Yeah. So it's really exciting to be doing that. And then we usually run an eight-week series in church. And I was looking at, I don't like, I always like to start the new year with right, a new, new series. Yeah. So we were trying to figure everything out. And it was like two weeks where, like, now what do we do? So we found this Christmas series. And I'm really excited about it. And now we're going to take the videos and stuff and we make a lot of stuff our own we come up with our own activities and games especially and, for the preschoolers yeah because you really want them to learn and to have fun and you know they all have different learning styles so you try to have different activities for each learning style There's so that every kid gets it for everyone yeah so i'm really excited about that now i have to put all the videos together and create all the media slides and everything but it's going to be a lot of fun I think the creamy was perfect. These were so good, but I am not a fan of these ice cream bowls. You don't like them? I like them. They look pretty, uh -huh. but it's got this little hole, like a divot in the bottom, and then the melted ice cream goes in there, and you can't get it no, out. No, you know what I did? I put the sink on hot, and then put a little bit of hot water in it, swooshed it around, and... That's a good idea. Got all of the It'd be better with leavings. coffee, especially considering it was mocha. I didn't have any hot coffee. coffee. So it was really filling for me, and we only had a half a piece. But there's something about like the keto chow ice cream, or any ice cream for me anyway. It's very filling. I mean, when you look at a keto chow ice cream, it's the same keto chow that you have in that blender bottle. But when you freeze it, I get fuller eating it, and it seems to make a lot more. I know you have the expansion and the ice and everything else, but the creamy container... It's the same size when you put it in and when you take it out, but there's something about it being frozen, maybe because you take longer to eat it. I don't know. All I know is every time I have it as a shake, I think to myself, gosh, I should have made this into an ice cream. I have never thought when I'm eating an ice cream, I wow, made this into a shake. I should have made this into a shake. So I always feel like that must be the direction. At least I enjoy it. But everybody likes it differently. I heard um, Shanta, I was reading, um, or not Shanta, Shauna had said she was having warm keto chow yeah. tonight. And I can totally understand that it makes the perfect kind of like a hot chocolate beverage. It makes beverage. the best hot chocolate. If you want a really good keto hot chocolate, get chocolate keto chow. Super simple. You don't even need an entire serving of it to make just a cup of hot chocolate. Like an entire serving will make like two or three cups. So it becomes pretty reasonably priced, but you're not dealing with all of the regular sugar and all of the garbage they put in the store-bought ones. And you're not paying like $25 for some of the keto versions of hot chocolate. But just like we were talking about how we have different 
you know, learning styles and different things appeal to different people. I thought it was interesting in the chat tonight during the premiere, Matreya, Radical Geek, was talking about how she's currently doing a challenge with like Keto Chow. She's going to do Keto Chow Creamies. Yeah. That's, that's going to be her food, like Keto Chow Creamies for a week. And I was thinking, but that's a really good spin on Keto Chow for a week, which we've done Keto Chow for a week. We did Keto Chow for a month. That's a cool spin on it. I mean, you did three Keto Chows in an OMAD and had to eat it in the bathtub because yeah. you were getting so cold. I don't know if I could. I mean, we didn't eat it out of the creamy. I no. Don't, it makes it thicker. so rich. Like, I don't know that I could do three yeah. in, a, in a creamy back-to-back, -back, like actual full servings of it. But what I thought was interesting was people were talking about even how they make that. Some people were talking about mixins mm -hmm. that they add, whereas other people were saying like, I can't use that particular mixin. It tears my stomach up or it just doesn't agree with me. Some people were talking about how they make um, the ice cream with heavy cream. Some were doing half butter, half cream. Some people like us have been doing all butter. So it's just amazing that you're like, okay, what variations could there be Keto chow and a creamy. Yep. Lots. Well, that's what makes keto chow so Lots good. Lots of different. Not just as an ice cream, but also for a shake is because it's so versatile. You can add so many different types of fat. You can use butter. You can use lard. You can use heavy whipping cream. You can use avocado oil. You can use coconut oil. Whatever you can think of, you can use but what it. what works for you, and I love that. We can cheer everybody on with what they enjoy. Yeah. Now, I saw in the comments that are in the, in the chat that some people were asking, like, when it comes to keto ice cream, if they have a compressor ice cream, what do you think of the creamy? We have a compressor ice cream maker. If you want my honest opinion, for the best type of ice cream, it's going to be the creamy. Yeah. That thing is magical. And we swore by our compressor ice cream maker, which is actually behind the stuff up there now. Right, up on the top and of the refrigerator. I'm probably going to sell it. And the only reason I might not sell it and just save it is because it is nice if you want kind of instant, you know, ice cream because it's... Fresh ingredients. You put everything in there and 30 minutes later you have ice yeah. cream. Whereas with the creamy... You have to You have frozen. to freeze it a day beforehand. Right. That's the only difference. But if you want creaminess, I think the creamy beats it. Can't be beat. The only other reason I would not sell our ice cream maker is because they are like $300. And when I bought it, it was like a prime deal at $140. So that was, I'd yeah. probably get at least what I paid back for it, but I'd never be able to replace it if I wanted to get another one in the future. So I may just hold on to I it and it becomes like to it. a shelf thing, like stick it in the garage or leave it on top of the refrigerator and use it once in a blue moon. I can't imagine now that there would be a time that we wouldn't have a creamy on the ready in right. case. Well, that's but, why I have so many of the containers. But you know what? You never know. Be yeah. Better safe than sorry. I could totally see us bringing it along on like a camping trip or something if you thought you wanted it. Yeah. I mean, especially because the freezer that we now have in our RV would actually keep it frozen. The yeah. old compressor style or the, you know, the, the kind that uses ammonia, that one would not it keep wouldn't anything have kept frozen. It but now we have a compressor fridge in there. So it actually would keep it like completely cold. So... This, I'm sure, has been a long vlog, even though I haven't started editing, but when you mix two days, you know... It just happens. It just happens. Thanks for bearing with us. And, you know, I know some people don't like long videos. This is just our style. Sorry. We apologize. We can't make it... Good. We can't make everybody happy. We try our best to kind of hit everybody's needs and stuff, but sometimes it's difficult, and we don't know how to shut up. We so. don't. I'm sorry. So tomorrow we're going to have uh, the beef roast. We made the whole extra roast yesterday. We're going to slice it up and pretty much it's going to be beef day. And then at some point during the day, we're going to have the Maria Emmerich egg pudding. I'm Looking really excited forward about to that. that. Just finished making it. I just love it. And I know it sounds weird. Chocolate pudding that and comes eggs. from eggs. And when you first make it, it does smell very farty. But when it sits... It gets better and better, and then by the next day, the smell goes away. I will leave a link for how to make the standard egg pudding uh, down below, and we will also put a link to her video up here. The version that is PSMF, where you're only using egg whites, she has that in a cookbook, so we don't release that recipe because right. the only way to get it is to purchase the cookbook, and that would not be fair to Maria at all. I mean, she's a genius, she is in, a the, genius. in the kitchen, and so I never want to... 
pass out that. And it's the same with any content creator or recipe creator. If they put really it on the hard. internet, if they put it on YouTube, make sure we, we honor them. Absolutely point you to their video and to their website and stuff. But if it's in a cookbook, I will just simply point you to their cookbook. Uh, and then after that, Wednesday, we're going to be back to pretty much beef, butter, bacon, and eggs again because we want to make sure we're feeling really good for the Thursday live stream because that's going to be a long day. And then probably on Friday, I want to bring back cheese if we can. I'd okay. like to revisit. You want to revisit cheese? I want to revisit We're going to do it. one kind this time instead of like two different types of cheese. Yeah. Well, that's going to be today's video. If you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at my most recent video, which I'm going to put right over you. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Till tomorrow. Bye. Bye.